Hello everybody, welcome to another RC Junkie video. Today I'm going to go through the Bier Bluetooth Link module for the SFR1, um, what you can do with it, how it works, and a very brief overview of how to use the app. Just as a reminder, the app is only available for Android devices at the moment. Uh, I believe it may be developed onto the iOS platform, I'm not sure, but to be honest with you, you could probably buy a cheap Android phone and use it just for controlling your models if you don't normally use one and you normally use an iPhone. So, just to go through my setup, please excuse the, the mess of wires here. I currently have set up a servo here to indicate steering movement. I have a little motor with a little bit of tape on it, just so you can see forward and reverse motion. This little servo over here um, is going to be the gear shift servo, and I have my um, servo naught rear lights for my Volvo F816 and for the front. And I also have a speaker just so we can get some sounds. Now, this is the little Bluetooth unit here. It's currently plugged in on the connector here. Now, I will just check in the manual which connector that will be, but to bear in mind, if you do use the Bluetooth module, you cannot use the S bus or I bus interface for your model. So that may or may not be a problem with the example I'm going to show. So what I've done here is I've set up my radio here. I'm just going to turn this on. Now I've set it up to use a two channel receiver. Now this is just a normal car two channel receiver and I'm using channels one and three. Now they currently go into the actual BR unit up here on the cable inputs. Hopefully you can see where they are. They're a lot clearer when you see them in the menu. Sorry, in the manual, I'm just giving you an indication of where this goes. So at this moment in time, I have steering. Hold on one second, let me just plug in my yeah, unit. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so at the moment we have steering, so we have left movement on the servo here, and we have right. Now, this will be uh, an indication of um, if you only had a two channel radio, and you can see here is actually doing the bending lights and the indicators, because that will, also, that will all work off the prop one and prop two inputs. So prop one being throttle and prop two being steering. Now obviously I have my channels one to one and I have channel three to two to three on here onto the prop one input. Hope you understand all that. And I can have forward and I get my brake lights and I have reverse and I have my brake and I have stop. But what I can't do is I can't turn the engine on. None of these switches currently have any function at all because I only have a two channel radio. So to get around that, what we can use is we can use the Bluetooth module. And I have the Bluetooth module here running on my phone. So once you have the Bluetooth module, I'll just try and get this so I can tilt it up so there's no shine on it. You then can basically assign 30 controls of the any of the controls so whether they're function sequences light sequences controls light outputs to these 30 buttons here okay and these are all configurable via the app there you go you can see i accidentally pressed one of them so what i've done on here is you could obviously mount this at the top of your controller so if your controller's here you can make up some sort of bracket they actually do do a bracket for this particular model where this unit mounts up here. So you could have this up here to replace these switches. Or if you've only got a two channel radio, you could certainly have those up there. So let's just take this out of the way. So at the moment, this is still working. We have all of these functions here, but what we can do is we can now assign our key functions to here. So what you would normally do with the iBus is you'd obviously assign all your additional switches that you have on the top of your radio to the actual particular proportional outputs. So what I've done here is I've just done a very quick example and I'm going to show you how to change one of the features as well. So we're talking to this little Bluetooth module here via the Bluetooth on here. All you need to do in the configuration is enable it and set a pin. And then in the actual setup in here, if you scroll to the bottom, you set your pin so you can hear. See, you might have just set mine as 1971, just a random number I come off. You choose your module 
So if you have the dual one or the HL, I think that's for tanks, I'm not sure, and you choose your English language. Now we'll go through some of these other options here as well. You can also save your project and recall it. So you can have one, one set up for one, one set up for another, but we'll just stick with this for the moment. So at the moment I have the light switches, plus and minus, I have high beam flash, I have hazards. Now scrolling down, we have engine on and off, and we have function sequences, function sequences, these are not used. And I've not used this particular row here for a particular reason, I shall go through with that in a minute. And what I've also done here is I've set up the servo output one, which is up on the radio up here, which is actually this one here. I don't know if you can see that, just by the little blue light on the actual controller. Just trying to keep everything in shot here. That's going over to this little servo here. So when we hit that there, let me just turn the volume up. Hopefully you can hear that. We get first gear, second gear, and we have no third gear at the moment. So we need to configure that button, but I'm going to show you how to do that as an example. I've also set this up as additional sound one, and you can change the tags or the names of these buttons. So they can be anything you like. So we have air horn, fairly weak ordinary horn. That's additional sound six. And you notice it's written in English here and then in German there. And I'll show you the reason for that in a moment as well. So additional sound seven, additional sound eight. Let me just go down in volume a little bit, just in case that's a little loud. Okay. So what we also have here is we have, and we have my daytime running lights are on. We, because you're, you need to basically assign these buttons to functions you'd use on a regular basis. So, I mean, obviously starting and stopping your truck can be on the scroll down because you're only going to turn it on and turn it off every other few minutes. It's not a button you need to get to every all the, um, all the time. So, we will turn that on. We'll increase the volume a bit so hopefully you can hear that. Now, if I go back to my radio. I'll just lay this down here a second. You can see now we've turned the, the actual engine on. We have the audio sound in relation to the actual movement sounds. And if we go backwards, hopefully you can see all this on my controller here. I have it set so we have a horn beeping and hazards when reversing. And we'll do a little bit of forward just to turn that off. I have my brake lights set to stay on for five seconds and then they drop off just so that you've taken your foot off the brake. Now if I do left on here you can see hopefully you can see here if I do a small amount of left movement I get let me just move my phone down here a little bit oh, and I'll just lock it there you go we get bending light and then the indicator comes on slightly after while the indicator's on, the daytime running lights turn off. That's all set up via here. So this is, again, this is all via proportional control. So let's move that over here. I'll just wake my phone up. So we go back to the app here. We have engine sounds on and off. So what we can now do is we can actually hit light switch plus light switch minus. Now in the SF1 sound teacher, you basically configure that on your first press which light comes on, on your second press which light comes on or which two lights come on. So I have mine set to be um, side, uh, dip, front fog, rear fog and then main. And I'll show you the reason for that. So if I hit plus, you can see here that this red light come on and these actually went slightly dimmer. Let me just turn off my other spotlight and hopefully all this will still show through. So if I go negative, you can see that these daytime running lights went slightly brighter. So that's on step one. Step two, you have the HID effect, the HID effect of your dip beam. Then we have front fog lights. We have rear fog lights, and they are both on. I can show you down here, they are both on. I'll just turn my volume down a little bit. Okay, now I've got it set as well. Let me just move that out of the way. We do not need that anymore. If I go to the next step, that's main beam. So if you want to drive with your main beam, that's your last step in the light sequence. And we can go down one. So we now have all of our lights on. 
and I have it set here so that if you want a high beam flash you can just assign that so you can flash the lights. We have the hazard lights, so we have hazards running on all four lights as well as the lights and we can turn the lights off by going down the sequences so we end up with just the hazards running. And I can turn those off. Now as I said we have first gear now the other thing you do need to know, you can set the speed of how quickly this changes gear and the actual range of motion. So at the moment I have it going plus 2,000, 1,500 milliseconds in the middle and then 1,000 milliseconds to down. Now you can set those in reverse. And I've set it to the fastest setting, so hopefully you can see the servo over there moving. So you do need to just hold the button for like half a second, just so you get the full range of motion. So if you only push it a little bit, you can see it only moves a little bit, so you just need to go first, second. Now, if you notice, our third gear is not working, so what we need to do is we need to assign this button. And to do that, you do it in this little cog here. Let me just turn off the engine, Ooh. so we've got some peace and quiet. If I go into here, you can see you have sensitivity of throttle and steering and neutral range, neutral range of steering, turning steering, this is my radio moaning, excuse me about that and we have driving with app which we'll cover in a moment and so you go down to here you've got button setup now we're in button setup you can see along the top of the bar here it says f816 connected button setup enabled so these buttons now do not function they are now in setup mode so what we need to do is we need to set this here to be third gear now the way this works is you go into here and you have your button label so you can type in here whatever you like and at the moment the function is not used now the in memory option means that it's basically the same as flicking the switch on your controller it's if you flick it on it stays on so therefore it's in memory so therefore this means that will stay on when that button is pressed now for the servo we do not want that but otherwise it's going to hold it in that position so we turn that off we go into the function and you can see in here that you get all the additional sounds all 30 of them you have your outputs 16 of them and then you have your predetermined functions as in the sound teacher so we have our light switch which i showed you parking light low beam high beam headlight flasher uh, front fog light rear fog light indicators hazard lights and then you move on to things like locomotive ship output sequences so if you have a sequence of outputs of lights or functions where you have a particular sequence of lights you can assign those we have our engine on and off, engine 2 on and off if you have the dual engine speed controller. Let me just try and get this so it's not shining in your eyes. Okay, then you've got play with sound, engine RPM change, software reset, you have the wave player. And what we're looking for, and the inertia as well in the functions, what we're looking for is down here. Now we have two servo outputs on the SFR1, and I'm using servo output 1. So you can see that server output one has four optional positions. Now we only need three and I've only set three up in the controller. So as I say, the first one is um, basically is up 2000 milliseconds, 1500 milliseconds, and then 1000 milliseconds. So we're looking for servo one in position three. Now we don't want it to be called servo one in position three. So we go into here. Now, just as a note, if your phone is like mine and you can't see the, the text line to type, this little button here it shows that line of text so we can go into here we can delete whatever's in here and we'll call this third gear you can call it whatever you like you've got a fairly long line of text bear in mind if you do put a long line of text in here the text will loop and depending on how big you've set your buttons whether it will fit or not so we just go for third gear and we hit done so you can see now we have Hopefully you can see that we have servo one position three assigned as third gear. Let me just move my radio again. So if I hit OK on that, you can now see we have first gear, second gear, third gear, and air horn. Now, if you remember previously, I said to you about this should be saying additional sound six. What happens was even though you've set the app into English, the menu options stay in German until you configure them. So if I go into configure. You can see that additional sound six is actually down as in the German sound six here. But if I hit OK, we 
can actually what it was doing to me earlier and it's not doing now is uh, let's just just go into here let me just clear that just cancel that let me just see if i can go to another one go to here there you go if you actually choose the function there you go not you so i remember now so this here it should be additional sound six so it says additional sound six but it says it in german but if you reselect it it now puts it into english for you so we now have additional sound six seven eight nine and ten so if we go back into the cog the other thing you can do in here is you can set your button height and your button size of text Oops, excuse me so if i set my button height to maximum and set my text to say half you can see how big the buttons are but that means you're going to have to scroll to find more options and you can see here that some of the text doesn't quite fit so that's why i was saying if you put a long line of text in it will loop it will actually loop or it will go across the button so i found that if we go down to about 40 and down to about 20 on the text you get a good range of size in comparison to text so if we go back into the cog we can now go down and we can turn the button setup off and we can now check our setup so if we hit first gear second gear third gear now what i've done is i've assigned the air brake sound or air shift sound just to the server just so you can hear where they are so you can go all the way from third to first and remember just to hold it for a second half a second just so you get the full range of motion because you could just move it gradually but all you need to do is hold 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 okay hopefully that explains that so if we turn our engine sound back on we can select first gear we can go down and i'll just move this down a little bit just so you can see you'll get an indication this light basically is mirroring what that one is so we can turn our lights on to dip beam front fog lights and then we can go rear fog lights or we can turn the rear fog lights off leave them off high beam flash put our hazards on excuse the radio and you can see the radio i know it's out of shot but if i'm moving the stick you still got all the control here of what the actual radio is doing now the reason i left this middle row let me just turn this engine off here and I'll just go and turn the lights off just to sequence them down now you could set a button that says lights off and just turn them all off and you might want to put that further down the bottom here now the reason I've left this middle row empty is there's a feature of the app and it's up to you whether you decide to use it I think it it could be dangerous it could be fun depending on how you drive your truck so let me explain so the moment we are using let me just put this phone down here moment we're using all of our light and operation functions via the app and we are still using the actual radio here excuse me we're still using the radio to basically essentially drive the truck so if i move that out of shot if i go back to the app here so hopefully we can get this where there's not too much shine on it if i go back to here we have the option to driving with app and sensor control and i shall show you the difference and we have auto neutral as well so once we enable that we then have the option to auto neutral and sensor control so i shall leave auto neutral on for the moment so now this is here we have trimming for steering so you can trim your steering so if you know your truck always drifts to the left but you can move it to the right and you could certainly be driving that with air so we now have all of these come into effect the sensitivity of the throttle the steering the neutral throttle range and the neutral throttle and uh, the neutral range of steering okay so let me just hit okay now you can see that we have now got a crosshairs and this crosshairs when i hit the drive button it will go green and then i can hit stop and it will stop now what this does is it basically allows you to drive your truck with the app so my controller over here still works if i hit drive the controller stopped working but what i can do drive to the left to the right I can go forward to the left to the right now if I let go because I have it as auto neutral 
it goes it basically goes back to the neutral position so we can select second gear and we can drive forward turn a little to the left a bit more to encourage the indicator bring it down in speed go from there and that also works obviously with the sound as well so let's just turn the engine back on okay so let's just stop driving turn the engine off go back to the cog and we now have because we have driving with app enabled we have sensor control now this may appeal to some people who particularly play game stations or playstation xboxes or, and, or even games on your phone where you have motion control and i shall show you why for the moment so we still have the crosshairs and as you can say that's why i didn't configure this ranger button just so i can show you the button controls our horn we still have our gears okay and we have our headlight sounds and stuff but what this allows you to do so let's just do it with the engine let's turn the engine on so you can see that this button here for engine is set in memory so it stays on that's where these buttons do not so that's the in memory function just in going back for that so, there, yeah. so we can do a little high beam flash now if we hit drive it's now using the accelerometer in my phone so if i go forward I'm going forward if I tilt left I'm going left and forward now we have indicator so we could use the horn and go from here now this doesn't auto sensor so you need to go back to the beginning tilt it back and if I can go back further I'm going to reverse and to forward If you're a person that likes to um, use your phone to steer, you can do it. Now bear in mind, the accelerometer sets to zero depending on which angle you have your phone at when you hit drive. So as an example, if I tilt this, just try and keep this straight in shot, if I tilt this forward and hit drive, you can see I'm now going to have to tilt the phone all the way away from me. But I've got better rear control. Stop driving. Okay, let me just so once you hit stop driving, your your controller takes back over. So so say so, so if we set this where we're holding this at a fairly normal angle we start driving go back forward and see out there from the right we can lower the volume increase the volume the we'll headlight flash play the horn change gear go back to first Stop driving. And I'll just give it a little click on my controller just to set everything back to zero. So, let me just turn all that off. That is a very quick overview of how you can use the app to actually drive your vehicle if you want to. As I say, we can do it where we have it with center control or without. So, this is where we have the crosshairs. If I go back into here, I can turn off the auto neutral as well. So we just drive. And it will carry on driving. And it will also carry on turning left. So, but that's the sense of not having springs on your sticks. That's where most people would normally have a, sp a sprung sticks. So let's just put the auto neutral back on. Here we drive now. We have that there. We can put it all out there and let go of it. What we're doing here, let go of it. We'll just give it a little bit forward. And say once you hit stop, your controller then comes back into effect. So 
it's entirely up to you whether you wanted to use the app for driving. Personally, I think it's more beneficial to actually have 30 controls and position this at the top of your controller. You can then have all 30 of your functions, your volume control, everything you need that you can get from here. So if you've only got a two channel radio, a four channel radio, and you want to have switches for your gear, uh, your third gear, your first gear, you can do it all from here. You can obviously also configure the actual SFR1 for the infrared link for a trailer. You can apply that function on here. So you could have servo output number one on IR, bear with me, for your landing, your, your landing gear, your uh, gear, your legs up and down, your actual uh, trailer legs up and down. And you could assign these buttons here. So we can just go into here. Uh, so if we turn on, excuse, sorry, this video is going on a bit. But if we go down to here, we go to here. If we go down to the bottom, I believe it is. You can hear here, if you have the SMIR16 with two servo outputs, you only have two positions on there, as where on the normal servo outputs, you have four positions. So if you're using servo number one for your, your gear, your legs to go up, we can go into here, we can go out of here, we can call this legs up. Okay. Go to the one below. We want to go down to the bottom and we want server number one, position two this time. And we want to get rid of that. And, oh, excuse me, let's do this. Legs down. Okay. So you can see here that if I go and turn the button setup off, we now have our legs up and down. And again, I set these as a press, not in memory. So you'd hold that and your legs would go up via the electronic speed control, however you've got them configured, and that will go legs down. And we can go through here. We've still got a high beam flash. Off on. So I think there'd be a very beneficial way if you want to get into using the SFR1 and all its wonderful controls, functions like sequences, your bending lights and all the rest of it, you can certainly do that even with a two channel radio. Now obviously you could have four channel and you can still assign one of your flick switches to say channel five and use that to change the gears rather than using buttons, but it's entirely up to you how you configure it. I just wanted to give you a very quick overview and example of what you can do with the Bluetooth module with the SFR1. I hope you found that all beneficial and helpful and hope the video is not going to drag on too long. It's getting towards 28 minutes now. Um, so please like and subscribe and by all means put in the comments any other videos or topics you want me to cover on this unit. Um, I might try and slip in some screenshots during the middle of this video just explaining where you enable the Bluetooth function actually in the sound controller and just a little bit, um, a little bit on the light switch control, how I said how the stepping works in here. I will do further videos on actually how to configure the actual SFR1, um, but this is just to cover the Bluetooth module. To say, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification button, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.